All right, I have a review today. Uh, this was uh, sent, sent into the channel uh, for a review, and it's from the company Link Micro, and they are on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. So this microscope is around $190, um, and the reason that I wanted to uh, uh, review this microscope is because I use microscopes all the time in the lab. Now, the microscope that I use uh, primarily is a, uh, a very expensive microscope made in Switzerland. Uh, it's vintage, but it's really, really good. Even on the used market today, it goes over $1,000. Um, now, the advantage of a microscope like that, of course, is the optics quality, but it's also a stereo microscope, so it actually gives you a stereo image. So if you're working on little things, you actually have depth perception. Um, so a, a, a microscope like this is uh, going to not give you the stereo, but on the other hand, you don't have to look into eyepieces. Now, I know a lot of people have problems looking through microscopes and telescopes. They just, they have a hard time getting their eye centered on the optics, and they're just not comfortable with it. If, you, if, you've, if you've done it for a long time, it becomes second nature, but it can be, it can be uh, difficult, even, especially for people who wear glasses. Uh, you can get special objectives and stuff for your microscope to allow you to wear glasses and stuff like I have on my, uh, on my microscope. But again, a lot of people have troubles with that. And some people just want something small too and light. So um, I, I think a lot of people will be interested in getting a microscope, especially these days when everything is surface mount. And uh, they either can't afford a nice microscope or uh, they don't like optical microscopes that have to stare through them, okay? So let's go ahead and turn this one on. It comes with a little remote control here, so I can just push the button and, uh, and it will turn on. So uh, it uh, has this nice display, so you don't have to look through uh, eyepieces. You can look right here. Now, the other nice thing about this microscope is um, I might be able to use this for my videos because when you're using a microscope that has a camera attached to it, I'm using an eyepiece camera, and so I can't look through the microscope at the same time I'm doing video. Um, some of the binocular telescopes have a third tube that allows you to mount the camera to, but again, there's a switch. You can either switch eyepieces or switch uh, the camera. It's a trinocular uh, uh, setup. Um, there's a few microscopes that allow you to do both camera and eyepiece at the same time, but I don't own that. And a lot of times I wish I did. So if I, if I want to do a video on me uh, repairing surface mount, um, where I'm going to, I'm going to get in here with, with tweezers and stuff. Um, I need to be looking through the eyepieces and it's difficult for me to do this stuff when I'm looking through the, um, viewfinder of the of the camera and so uh, this will allow me maybe to do some some better videos so that's another reason i was interested in it all right so what is this uh what is the setup well it's just basically a camera with a lens on it um this is a a four megapixel camera and uh we can kind of take a look at what it's got here it's got a a, a lens on the bottom and there's a, a a big spin thing here that's that's your focus okay and um, the complaint I have with this is it has some backlash. And so you can go one way and then it's some black backlash to get to go the other way. So, uh, so that can be a little bit frustrating at times, uh, but there's a workaround for that that I'll show you. Um, in the back of the microscope is a normal, um, is a normal microscope handle, right? And you can move it up and down with that, and that doesn't have any backlash. So, uh, if you're if you if that that other feature is kind of driving you crazy, um, you can get yourself close with this one, okay, and then reach behind and use the uh, use the mechanical focus to to get critical focus on it. So, uh, you can do it either way. Um, I think with some practice, the the uh, this one is just fine. I can usually hit it on pretty good with just uh, just grabbing this one. Now it does come with different lenses. It comes with three different lenses. So that's pretty cool. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that. We'll look at that a little bit later, but this is a, I think a standard, standard lens that most people will use for something like surface mount. Um, now, one of the big advantages of a microscope like this is working distance. Uh, you don't want to have your microscope directly on top of the parts you're working on. So I can get my whole hand under this microscope. Um, so you have about a, uh, right now I have about 130 millimeter uh, 
uh, working range. I could probably move this up near the top. Let me move it up here, um, and we'll and we'll refocus it. So our zoom has changed, of course. So yeah, so there we go. So I'm I'm still getting a perfectly fine, uh, I'm still getting a perfectly fine image, and my working distance now is 150 about 170 millimeters. Okay, so that's a little bit too high for me. I'm gonna move it back down. Move it down about here. I think the the uh, magnification is is just about perfect right here. All right. Um, so some of the other features, uh, other than the focus, like I say, and the replaceable uh, uh, objectives, um, this is the objective and eyepieces. Yeah, this is the objective. Um, is the lighting setup. So it comes with these two uh, gooseneck lamps. So one of the nice things about having this is you can see sometimes I have a. Let me, let me move around here. Um, Sometimes I have a hard time seeing the printing on ICs, but if you get the get the uh, lighting uh, just right, it's easier to see that printing, right? So it's nice to have adjustable adjustable lighting. Now, also on the remote on the remote control, which uh, it, there's a plus and a minus, okay? And uh, I can increase the brightness of those LEDs, or I can decrease the brightness of those LEDs. So that's that's very nice too. So they thought they they thought that through. Um, a lot of times macro photography all comes down to lighting. Um, so that's a really, really nice feature. Uh, there are some uh, settings for the camera. You can change exposure of the camera. You can change a bunch of things on the camera. But I think most people just do a kind of a, a set and forget set and forget and just uh, and just do it that way. So here we can flip it over. And then we need to uh, we need to refocus, and there you go. See, it's just fine. Um, so I think with some practice, that that knob's going to be just fine. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, now, one of the cool things about this camera is that it has HDMI output. All right. So let me. Oh, geez, I just rolled over something. Um, let me go ahead and set up my uh, screen capture here, just a second. Okay, so I have a screen capture going, uh, so you can get a better a better idea of the uh, optics quality here. Um, it's not too bad. You can see from uh, if I turn it around and I put on these, uh, uh, you can read these labels at the top, right? And so we have a uh, A zero, A one, A two. Okay, uh, if I if I take a3, and I put it right there in the center. You can see that A3 is super, super sharp. And now if I move it over here into the corner, that A3 is blurry, okay? And so um, inexpensive optics do this, okay? They're sharp in the center, but they're blurry in the corners, right? So just expect that. It's going to be a little bit blurry in the corner, but it's going to be very, very nice in the center, all right? And that's just a matter of how much do you pay? <laughs> how much do you pay for your microscope? Um, all right. Uh, let's see, what else can I show you here? I can show you the lighting effect a little, at a little different time, right? You can say, okay, I, I need, I need a particular lighting. Otherwise I can't, I can't see the, uh, I can't see the writing on that IC. Uh, so that's really, really nice. All right. So, uh, the only other thing I would say about the, uh, HDMI, uh, output is that there's some lag. Uh, there's a, almost a half a second of lag between, uh, the video image here and the image on the screen capture. Uh, so uh, if you're using an external monitor as the normal display over HDMI, you're not going to be happy with it because there's going to be a big lag. Uh, so the use case would be always use this screen uh, as the viewing screen and, and then use the video capture just like, a, you know, for, for later use. Uh, but I don't think you want to use it live. Okay. Why don't we uh, let's see what else can I talk about? Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about these lenses. I haven't actually changed the lens yet, so let's let's try those other two lenses. Okay, to remove the lens, uh, you have to take these two screws out of the sides, and the lens just drops out the bottom. So here's here's this lens. Uh, it is marked um, A. Let's mark, let's take a look at this one. It's marked L. Uh, 
And we can see we get a we get a blurry image, so we're gonna have to figure out where we need to change the uh, the amount. Uh, oh, I have to go up. Oh, interesting. Okay. This one is a longer, maybe it's, that's why it's L, it's a longer, longer working distance. Oh, look at that. Ah. Okay, so we get a uh, much more magnification at a much longer distance. So that's pretty cool if you like that. Uh, I have a little bit of, there we go. Um, so that's, that's very useful if you have a, if you have a need for a very, very long working distance. This one worked good and we get really big magnification. Now this is, this is a little too much magnification for uh, doing surface mount stuff. You are a little bit too close here, but uh, for inspecting like say solder joints, uh, this would be very, very nice. Yeah, let me uh, turn on the screen capture. All right, there we go. And we can change the, uh, change the lighting. Yeah, so we have this huge working distance now with that lens. Very, very nice. All right, let's try, uh, let's try the last lens. I believe this last lens is mostly for kind of biological microscope use where you're very, very close. Um, it actually comes with a, a lighting stage that does bottom illumination and then some microscope slides with uh, uh, things like bees, a wing off of a fly or bee or something like that. Some other things that you can, that you can take a look at. Um, I'm not too interested in things like that for this channel, um, but uh, we might be able to hook one of those up a little bit later. Let's take a look at this one here. Now this one, it says objects distance four to five millimeters. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be, I'm gonna have to be super, super close for this one. And so when you're that close, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to get illumination in there. And that's why these objectives are really only good for, uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. I'm, I need to have some lighting up here. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna kind of demo this one. So there we go. So what I'm looking at is, is my ruler. And you can see that it's super, super fun. This is, this is just a, a ruler. I'm looking at one of those lines on the ruler, okay? And uh, so, yeah, so this type of lens would be really, really good for, like I said, uh, that, that bottom illumination, but we'll do that. We'll do that one a little bit later because we have to, we have to set up the lighting different and I'll show you how that's done. Okay, let's put back on my favorite lens. Let's go back for the A lens. Um, uh, this one is marked object distance 12 millimeters to 200. Uh, 320 millimeters. So, depending on where you are, see, we still we still can we still can use this lens really really far away. But I don't like it up there. I want it down farther. I want it about there. I'm just changing the uh, sliding the camera up and there's a post in the back, and I'm just sliding the camera up and down, and then I can just refocus it, and we are ready to go. All right, I'll get the. Uh, Get the lighting back. Okay, so that's the way I would normally normally use the microscope. All right, uh, just to make that more clear, there's there's a bunch of uh, you can move it up and down the post, and there's a stop here. You can move that stop collar up and down. The post actually rotates back and forth too, and then this thing goes this thing goes up and down for 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 critical focus. Um, it, yeah, it's set up it's set up pretty nice. It's all uh, all aluminum, so it's all metal. All metal construction feels pretty good. Um, so uh, it does come with remote control, so we can do things like uh, go into the menu system, set resolution, exposure, sharpness, color. Uh, the second page here, I think. Let's see here, yeah, grid settings. Uh, so we can turn a crosshairs on. We get a red. A red crosshair uh, on the screen that can be very useful. Uh, we can turn on some lines. 
uh, horizontal and vertical direction and color. Yeah, we can set put some we can put some lines on it, which sometimes is nice for setting things up. Yeah, I kind of like that red the uh, crosshair there. Um, so. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's enough of the re review of this microscope. I think some people will really enjoy it. Some people might find it, find it frustrating. I don't know. Um, I think it's all, all up to personal taste. Um, whether you've been raised on an optical microscope or you like these digital microscopes. But certainly the you can't beat the price. Uh, microscopes, like I said, can be very, very expensive. So. Uh, this one is definitely, I think, in people's budget range. And I believe there are cheaper versions than this one. Like if you don't need HDMI output um, and, and maybe you don't need all three lenses and stuff. I think there are other options available. I'm not sure about from this vendor, but I've seen other vendors uh, selling microscopes similar to this. I don't know what their quality is, uh, but this one seems to be quite nice. So, yeah. So let me rearrange things a bit and I'll show you that microscope, the uh, uh uh, microscope slides type of thing. All right, so we get this box, which is just a, a white LED in a box. We need to unplug the lighting power from the back and plug it into here. And now we now we have light coming in from. I'll go over this one. Now we have light coming in from the bottom. You can see the LED there, um, and it does come, like I say, with some objects to look at. This is a compound eye. Maybe, I don't know. So let's focus on this. Oh, oh I see, this is just part of a fly, I think. Um, so you can see that this is not the right lens to be using for, uh, for this type of application. So we will change over to the um, four to five millimeter lens. And then we'll be able to look really, really close on this thing. Okay, the D lens. Okay, now we need to lower, lower our stage way, way, way down. Way, way, way down, there we go. Um, there's our object and let's let's get close to it and there we go look at that so pretty cool i mean um yeah i mean even in a classroom light if you if you needed to project with the H, the hdmi uh output to a big class um, you know if you have a, a, a projector or a, a big LCD on the on the wall or something yeah I think it's pretty good I think uh, getting getting three different lenses all together in the package uh, having bottom illumination top illumination uh, HDMI output, uh, a seven inch, I think it's a seven inch screen. If I remember right, yeah, it's a seven inch diagonal uh, LCD, which is pretty good quality. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a reasonable value. Okay, that's my review of the Link Micro um, microscope. Like I said, be, be a link down below and uh,